I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk to you about 3D carvers. So first off, you may be asking, well, what is a 3D carver? So a 3D carver you may know as a CNC, but CNC kind of encompasses a lot of different machines. A 3D printer is a CNC. It is computer numerically controlled, which just means it has a computer telling you how to move. It's got G-code. Uh, 3D carvers have G-code, 3D printers have G-code. But with a 3D carver, rather than adding material by printing filament, you are cutting away at material. It is a subtractive manufacturing process to the additive of 3D printing. Now there are different forms of 3D carvers. Some are designed to be put in a classroom or a small space where you don't have a huge dust collection system. Or there are other ones that are more designed for workshops where you can have a big cutting area but it's a little less refined, it's a kit, so it's going to just be a big sheet of MDF with some nice rails on it to keep it all aligned, but it's for a different audience. So one of the first forms is the desktop style, where it's enclosed in some form, whether it's plexiglass or a metal frame that's held open with hydraulics or something like that. And those are really designed for sort of a plug and play ability, where you unbox it, everything's guided, it's pretty easy to set up, but it's gonna be a little more expensive because of those features. They do also tend to have a smaller work volume, but it will have the same sort of material capabilities as the bigger ones. Now these desktop ones usually have a spindle on them, which means rather than just a standard hardware tool router, it is a precision made and controllable router system. So instead of there being an on and off, you can actually control how fast is it cutting. So if you're trying to cut like aluminum, it can do that slower so you're not going to tear apart the bits and just break the machine. You can fine tune and control depending on the material. So let me grab a couple things that we've made in house with a 3D carver. So here we've got a couple different things that we've carved in a variety of woods and then metal. This is aluminum. So this guy is actually the reason that we started getting into 3D carving. We needed a machine that could mill out aluminum and make Y bed carriages, Y axis bed carriages for the Pulse printer. And you know, this, this worked really well. So then we started looking into more of them and finding that they were a really impressive um, line of tools. Otherwise, what we have here, this is the uh, first carve that one of, our, one of my coworkers did. She had the vector file, put this in the program and pressed go and this is what it was able to do. Whereas something like this and this puck, they're a little more intense because you, you have an inlay that's supposed to go in this one like this and it takes a little trial and error to get that to work well. However, once you do get it right, this is a beautiful cutting board or cheese board depending on how you want to use it. And, you know, made from walnut, we got a nice light wooden here it's for the contrast, but it is a great piece to, to be able to create something like this. And it's not something you'd be able to make with 3D printing because it's not food safe, whereas this is wood. This is a lot of kitchen utensils made from that. Now besides desktop, there's also large format 3D carvers. And those are usually kits just because that's a bit easier to fit into the mail. You have a lot of long aluminum extrusions and big sheets of wood that have to go together but they're usually cheaper and easier, pretty easy to assemble because, I mean, it's just a couple parts that have to be screwed together and mounted, and all of the instructions are very self-explanatory, and you're not limiting yourself on materials either. You can still cut wood, you can still cut metals, whether they're aluminum or copper, or you want a hardwood like walnut. It's, it's all, they're all very capable machines. It's just you have a much larger area to, to cut things. So, if your classroom, something like, a, like an X-Carve wouldn't be something you'd want to fit in there because it's dusty and there's a lot of space that it takes up. But if you have a workshop, it is a very valuable tool to have in there. So whether you're in an office or you have a workshop, having a 3D carver is a really versatile tool to have in, in that area. And I hope that this video has maybe sparked some interest in you to, to look into 3D carvers and see what you can make with them. But if you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. 
Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.